Hi all, at the March 9th, 2015 Apple Watch reveal, Apple also showed its new MacBooks, but in particular, it showed its new research kit app that's going to help medical research use the iPhone and maybe the Apple Watch to record vast quantities of data for their research and really increase our understanding of some chronic diseases affecting much of the world. Apple's Senior Vice President of Operations, Jeff Williams, was invited to give the address. He doesn't normally do uh, keynotes, but in this case, uh, he was, uh, he's behind this project. And there are a couple of interesting uses of text and movement that I want to use and show you and try and duplicate because they're quite effective ways to bring text in and off a slide rather than just doing a, a word dump as most people do with, with uh, Death by PowerPoint. He's using a cube method of animating words in and out of a slide. And I've been doing this for quite a few years now. And it's good to see this has been included in some of the Apple public keynotes. So let's see how it works. And I'll take you through step by step, turning my attention now to my keynote, which is in front of me, which you can also see. Uh, this starting point in keynote, we're using the last version of keynote. Uh, what you see here is a screenshot from iTunes and it comes in here at roughly 18 minutes into the keynote when Jeff has been introduced. So this is the model that we're going to be working with. Uh, we see the logo for Research Kit, its name. Here's Jeff here. And what's going to happen in uh, a, a little while is that this Research Kit logo will move over here to the left leaving some white space, as it's called, in between, which is where the text will be introduced uh, in this sort of cube fashion. I took some screenshots of both Jeff and this logo using my favorite software, which is called Voila, which is my favorite screenshot software. I'll just bring it up here you are, and you can, you can see it here. So this is the screenshot that I took from iTunes, the podcast. And uh, just to let you know how easy this is, it just have, once it takes a screenshot, you simply drag it over, you can see, and boom, just drop it. So that's terrific. And uh, the good thing about Voila is it doesn't litter your desktop with uh, screenshots. You still use Shift Command 4 to do a screenshot of an area that you want. And Shift Command 3, of course, is the entire desktop. Not that we want that. So let's put this away. And here we have it. So I'm going to now remove this because uh, I have got the, the screenshot already embedded on my keynote. Uh, it's a, at a slightly different point. Um, so you can see here that here's Jeff smiling. So I've duplicated the words research kit here and here's the logo. But notice if you would, um, we're using this grade, the same sort of gradient theme that Apple uses, but because it's a screenshot, we don't see the logo. So this is where you want to highlight this and you're going to use your instant alpha to get rid of it. So it forms a little square like this. The center shows you what color is going to be eliminated. Down we come like so. Let it go. Boom. There it is. Okay. So several things happen in the next slide. If you watch the video, uh, you'll see I created the GIF on my own website, you'll see. So what happens is that this moves to the left at the same time that this leaves, and then some words appear here. There are three words that are going to appear here. There are several ways to make this move to the left. The simplest way, of course, well, I won't say the simplest. One of the ways will be a an action. Here are the transitions. Animate, we can build something in, take something that's already there and move it or do something with it or remove it. Bring it in, move it around, get rid of it. We could add an effect. The effect that we want is to move it. When you hit move by default, don't ask me why Apple moves it or Kinet moves it to the right. We don't want it to move to the right. We want it to move to the left. And what Apple allows you to do, of course, under preview, you can see. So that's okay. So that's one way of doing it. Let's go back to where we were and just have it back there. I don't particularly want to do it that way to tell you the truth. I'm going to use magic move. 
And the way to do it with magic move, you highlight this. So there's a yellow border around the, the area here. We duplicate the selection. There we go. And we're going to move this to the, where I want it to be. Okay. There we go. So if we hit preview, we can see what's going to happen. The little blue triangle here in the corner tells us that there's a transition built into that slide as there is with this one as well. Okay, now what's really interesting is that when we when this thing moves, this logo moves to the left, the words research kit dissolve away. So in the second slide here, we're going to dissolve, we're going to just simply remove it. Now let's see what happens if you just remove it and you do a, a transition. It also dissolves away. And it's a dissolve because that's what motion uh, magic move is. It's, it's a dissolve. Uh, you can change how long that dissolve goes for by changing the duration. Okay. What's also interesting is that as soon as this logo moves to the left on this second slide, the first of the three word elements is going to appear in here. All this other stuff here, you don't have to worry about. Not important. Okay. So that's what we have. So we're going to work now. The question you might ask me is, which should I use? Should I just use the move or should I use magic move? And to tell you the truth, my preference is to use magic move. I don't like to clutter up one slide with a whole bunch of bills or whatever else. It just makes them unweirdly. So if you can do it with one slide, move to the next slide and leave the slides as clean as possible. To me, that's the preferred way of doing it. It doesn't really matter if you use hundreds of slides and maybe you'd say to me, well, I could have all done this in five rather than a hundred slides. Who cares? Your audience doesn't know how many slides you're using if you do your work well. And it doesn't matter to them if you're using a hundred slides as long as you get your message across. So forget all those people who say to you, oh, you shouldn't use more than X number of slides in a presentation. Where does that rule come from? Go back to them and say, where's the evidence base for that? Because you'll say, there is no evidence base. Let's keep going. We have three lines of text that are going to come in here. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller because I've actually pre-prepared, it's like a cooking show, I've actually pre-prepared the lines of text. This is the first one that comes in. And it comes in immediately after the transition. That is, after this has moved from here to the left, this dissolves in. Okay? So if I just leave it there, let's see just what happens now. So we'll go full screen. Let's see what happens. Here's slide number one. What I expect to see happening is the logo moves to the left. Research kit fades away or dissolves. And that first line of text should just appear. And there it is. So in one move, in one transition, three things happen. It's really interesting. The logo moves to the left, the research kit dissolves out, and the software framework text, which we want, fades in or dissolves in with one transition. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Slide number one, slide number two. The next one, which is where we're going to cube out this, and we're going to cube in this and then this is going to cube out and this is going to cube in so these are three lines of text now jeff in a typical powerpoint it would have been this and then this comes in and then this comes in and now you've got a really heavy text laden slide and, and we really don't want a text laden slide and i don't like it either but for the time being we're going to leave things on the slide because we want to work with them later on Things get a bit more complicated. So here we here we have it now. Okay. So I'm going to leave that there for the time being, and we're going to work on this one. Okay. Now this is the one that's unique because it both cubes in and cubes out. This one only cubes out, and this one only cubes in. 
So it's not as if we can sort of just copy the same trend, uh, animations for all three of them because the, the three are different. So let's start off with this one. It's going to cube out. So we go to build out, add an effect, cube. For whatever reason, the default for Apple when the cubes in, as, a, as a, an animation is left to right, bounce. We get rid of that and we're just going to make it bottom to top. Preview. Nice. One second. Don't have to worry about any of this other stuff. So that's that one done. Okay. Let's have a look at the build order. You'll see. I'll just move it here. First one, and it's going to be on a click because Jeff keeps talking on a click. Okay. And we here we see now build number one. And we see the first three letters of software framework builds out. No delay, just on our click. Move this out the way for the moment. Now we want to do this one. This one's going to have a, both a build in and a build out. So we need to build it in first. I'd like to just, we just we're going to do it in order. So again, cube. Notice it does it still doesn't remember what I just did. So bottom to top. Preview. Nice. Notice, if you will, that at the moment it's set up as to happen on a click, but we actually don't want it to happen on a click. It needs to cube in as this cubes out. These two things need to happen simultaneously. So this one is going to be with build one. And watch what happens here. They link. Can you see? They're linked. Okay, that's because it's got the one box. So if I click on this preview, you can see what happens. And that this gives you a sense of the timing. Yeah, that's great. But this one now, we need to add a new build. It's going to be the build out. Build out, cube, and again, the same thing. So we're going to go back to bottom to top. Let's preview it. Cubes out. Notice this one all already is off screen. Okay, it doesn't exist anymore because this is the new one. We're going to do this on a click because Jeff's going to talk a bit about this first. And then when it cubes out this one, let's research as easy create apps. It's going to queue in. So build in, back to cube, same default. Go back to bottom to top. Make sure that you must make sure that the timing is the same. One second. Okay. So this is build out. Let's research it now. This has to happen with build three. So now we've got it linked. So if we do preview, you can see what happens. Now things get complicated because now you have to overlay these things and test it out. Okay, boom, works, great. And now this one has to overlay at the same time, boom. Now it gets complicated, yeah? And preview, boom, that's exactly the effect we wanted. And that completes our task. The difficulty here is because they're all overlaid, you don't see any layers. So it's hard to sort of grab one of them. You have to highlight it uh, in PowerPoint. Uh, what actually happens is that they've been able to kind of turn the slide around like that. So you see it cross-sectionally, and then you can just reach in and just drag one forward and back. And why the keynote team have not come up with some uh, with a unique solution to this layering. I've been complaining about this to the team for at least six years. So we can't really, it's very hard to see the layers. All you can do is move forward, move back, bring to front, bring to back. But we can't just sort of drag and just say, I want the U to go to four, the U to go to three, U to go to four. It doesn't work. Well, we're done here. Okay, so I think uh, we should uh, go back to here and play it and see what happens. Play. So yada yada yada. He's talking. We want to introduce it to Research Kit. Moves over. It's a software framework made specifically for me medical research. Yada yada yada. It turns your iPhone and Health Kit into powerful tools for medical research. Yada yada yada. Keeps on talking. Let's researchers easily create apps. And we're done. 
If I look at it more closely, there's probably only one part that I might be a little concerned about, and that's a, it's a bit too high up. So I might I might want to bring that down a little bit. And this is where you get into a bit of problem with trying to grab that. You see what happens? It's a little bit of a problem. So what you can do is go into Format here, uh, Arrange, and then using the Y axis control here, you can kind of bring it down a wee bit. Can you see what I'm doing here? Because it was so hard to, to grab it because it's grabbing the other things. Let's try it one more time and we'll call it quits after that. Here we go. Boom. Boom. That's a little bit better. Okay, that's great. So that's it. That's how you do it. And it's a really useful way of bringing in and out um, great quantities of text, in fact. But there's no need to keep them all up there at the same time because it, it's distracting. Here's my point gone. Here's my next point, gone. Here's my third point, gone. And then I'll use my voice to summarize just what's going on here. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be doing some more another time soon. Bye.